Let's do one of them in this video. So I'll bring this one in before we get more complicated. And this goes back to our one-way lighting circuit. We said we came from the consumer unit into the common of our switch, our one-way switch, out of L1 to our lamp, and we brought the neutral straight from the consumer unit to the lamp itself. So what I've got here, wiring diagram shows a consumer unit. This is a box in the conduit, this is a T-box. Comes down to a switch, which is a one-way switch with common and L1. And I've got a lighting point here with just three terminals, switching line, neutral, and CPC. Remember, there will be no looping terminal in this system. So hopefully, we can apply the knowledge from this one in order to wire this one. And then we'll develop it in another video where we look at two-way, two-way intermediate and adding extra lights in different rooms as well. So first of all, we've got to work out where our line connection's coming out of here, our neutral and our CPC. So this one here is our CPC. This one here will be our neutral. And we've got these here showing our two uh, overcurrent protection devices. Well, we've only got one circuit coming out of here, so we're going to come out of the first um, circuit breaker, which will be a six amp one closest to our main switch. And we said the line conductor goes directly to the common of our first switch. So let's see that again. Our line conductor goes directly to the common of our first switch. So let's put that one in. So we come out of here and we're gonna bring that through our system, through our conduit system and we said it's gonna go directly into the common of the first switch. Next, neutral. We said the neutral went from the consumer unit directly to the light. So let's do that. So from the consumer unit directly to the light. So out of our neutral connection here, I'm sure you'll make a really neat job of doing this compared to my freehand effort. And that comes straight into here and goes into the neutral of our lighting point itself. We need a switching line from here going directly to the light. So from L1 directly to our light itself. And then we can look at putting our CPCs in as well. So we come out of uh, L1, and I'm gonna bring that through the conduit system in singles, and I'm gonna bring it into my switching line conductor of my lamp. There's only three terminals up here. Now the CPC. So the CPC is gonna start in the consumer unit. It'll either go to the switch first and then the light, and this way you're gonna have to use your imagination a bit. If this switch drop here was eight meters, and that was one meter, which route would you take for the CPC? Well, I'd bring my CPC up to the light point there and then drop it back down there. What I wouldn't do is bring it all the way down here, eight meters, all the way back up eight meters and go across one meter. So you can see why the CPCs, it's important that we take a logical route in order that we wire them down and use the minimum amount of cable. Well, they look on this drawing as if they're a very similar distance apart. So you're probably logically gonna bring a CPC down to the switch and back again. Often in a conduit system, the actual switches themselves can be metallic, and obviously the CPC will be needed um, because that metallic switch is an exposed conductive part. We also use our plastic switches as well in this conduit system. So we've used plastic switches as well, of which there will need to be a CPC connection in the back of the switch box. Just depends what you're looking at when you're doing it. But let's bring the CPC round anyhow, like so. So we're gonna bring our CPC through our conduit system and connect it into here. And now you've got to make a choice of coming back out again, and then you've got to bring one that comes up to the lighting point itself. I'd like to think you're gonna make a lot better effort of, of cables crossing over, etc., because you'll plan your route as you go through in order to make it nice and logical. But that gives us a wiring diagram when we actually used the circuit diagram to help us. So let's just recap that then. We used neutral one, CPC one, and the breaker number one in our consumer unit. And, oh look, I've got an S on the end. Look, somebody needs to just pick this up. Look, consumer's unit, consumer unit. And we need to come through our system itself. So we bring our line conductor through down to our switch into the common. We have our switching line from L1 up to our lighting point. Our neutral goes directly from our consumer unit to our uh, lighting point. Our CPC takes a logical route round the system in order that it gets to every point. 
And this system is great from the point of view, you only take cables exactly where you need them. So because we can pull these cables through the conduit system and take it directly to the point in which we need it, we don't end up having cables at any point, at a switch or a light that aren't required. Hence, no looping terminal up here because our permanent supply went to our switch, our switching line came back in order to complete this simple one-way lighting circuit. As we move on, we're gonna look at some other stuff. So we'll end up looking at things like this. We'll end up looking at a more complicated two-way intermediate with two lamps as a circuit diagram. We can apply it then as a wiring diagram. We will also have this system here where I can have, say, light one controlled by switch one, wire it, then have light two controlled by switch two, light three controlled by switch three, and we can see how we can bring the system through without having to return to the consumer unit every time to pick up our permanent line. We can also make these two-wayed, two-wayed and intermediate, two-wayed, two lights, etc. There's plenty of opportunities to increase the, the knowledge through the wiring diagrams that we can produce in later videos. In this one, I just wanted to introduce the flexibility of using PVC singles as we've done here. And we've got some circuit diagrams that can be used as wiring diagrams, and we saw that with the one-way switch. We also have introduced the two-way intermediate, as well as the two-way lighting circuit using this conduit looping method. A method that means that we take our conductors only to the positions in which we need them before we go to our next area. Hopefully you're using a ruler if you've downloaded the document below and hopefully you're making a more logical pattern around because this will help you in the workshop wire your conduit lighting systems and we'll continue it on in other videos. But as always, I hope this video has been some help.